We thank you for this morning. We pray that may you be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We may be seated. Let us give thanks to the Lord for his good, his love and yours forever. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Many who are qualified to do excellent work accomplish little because they are, they attempted little. This Sabbath is a special day and I'm grateful we are all here. At this time, I welcome you all to today's worship. May the Lord be with us, amen. Praise God, church. Amen. We're going to sing again the song number More, More About Jesus. 
Song number 248. If you love this name, then I would like to hear you sing it loud. Yeah? Amen. There is a name I love to hear. I love to hear his word. It sounds like music. In my ears, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, 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 oh how I love Jesus. Oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. He tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. He tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfectly. Our next song, uh, we're not singing, we serve a risen Savior. The Eric, can you change the song for us, please? They changed it because the piano is in camera. So that would be on that one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Amen. Shall we please take our seats? <laughs> Amen. We have some few announcements. As usual, there will be potluck at 1.30 p.m. or 13.30 downstairs. So we are not going to stools today, but downstairs. And we are reminded about the sub, uh, hymn Sabbath coming on on the 18th of March. And we want everyone to select his or her favorite hymn and sing that hymn on that Sabbath. And these hymns can be sung in your lo uh, local or native language. It is your favorite one. So we would like to hear those from Egypt, Romania, uh, Ethiopia, German, and all uh, the international students who are here, we would like to listen to your hymns so that it will inspire us to also learn your languages. And once again, 
the Sabbath school, the attendance is going down every Sabbath. So we are entreating everyone to come to the Sabbath school and share the word of God. And it starts at 10.30 to 11.30. Here ends the announcement. It's time to pray. And um, I would ask, ask us to, um, to be in the mode of prayer. Um, let me ask, has God been good to you? personally. Do you have any reason to thank God? Do you have? Okay, it's a personal question you, you can answer by yourself. But you know, there is so much trouble in the world, and we see these troubles all around us. Not long ago, we heard about the earthquake in, in Turkey and in Syria. And um, when I listened to the news this, this, um, this weekend, I understand that over 45,000 persons have lost their lives already. Sometimes it sounds like a tale or a story in our ears, but these are people that have families just the way we have. These are fathers that have wives, perhaps children, and um, they didn't just die, they died in a very unfortunate way. Sometimes when these things happen, we, we begin to question ourselves again. Where is God in all this? And you know, there are people who lose their faith because of this kind of, of um, calamity. But as Christians, we have come today to strengthen our faith in God and to try to make sense of, of these difficult things we cannot explain. We believe that God is still God and he allows everything for a reason. However, this morning I want us to, to pray especially for those families that have lost their loved ones. Not only in Syria, not only in Turkey, but there are many other parts of the world. The war in, in Ukraine is still on. People are dying every day. And uh, perhaps because the media is no longer talking about it so much, we have forgotten. There are many other places in Africa, in the Middle East, where wars are raging every day. And um, it, should, it should also touch our hearts that people live in places where, where they are not safe. So this morning, I want to encourage us to go in pairs, in, in twos, or in threes if you like, and let our major prayer point um, center on on those who are suffering. I, I believe in miracles. Perhaps there may be people still in the rubbles who may be rescued. No one knows. But let's pray to God and ask him to have mercy on us. Then when you hear amen, we summarize our prayer. Maybe we can pray for two minutes.
May the Lord answer our prayers in Jesus' name. Dear Father, we join our faith together this morning to ask you first to forgive us our sins and accept our prayer. Lord, we are not praying just for ourselves today, but we pray for those who are affected by the earthquake in, in Turkey and also in Syria. Lord, we, we pray for your peace upon the families that are bereaved at this time. We know the rescue effort is still, still going on after almost two weeks. And there are, there are cases of miraculous stories of people who were saved, you know, babies and all the rest. Lord, we, we know you are still in charge. Sometimes it's hard to make sense of all these, all these disasters. But we just want to trust in your grace. We want to trust in your love. That one day you will bring an end to all this pain and sorrow. We also pray for those who are victims of wars. As we have in, in Ukraine. And those who are victims of tribal conflict all over. Please Lord, have mercy on us. I want to pray that you, you send help to those who are in need of help even this morning. And then we pray for this congregation. Is there anyone who has come here today with a burden? Perhaps someone is sick. Maybe someone is praying for a family member. Maybe it's a financial problem. It could be anything. We pray that you, you answer such prayers today. Oh Lord, we, we look forward to that day when Jesus will come again. We look forward to that day when he will come to make all things new. When there shall be no more war. When there shall be no more sorrow. When there shall be no more pain. We look forward to that day. Until that day, Father, we ask that our faith will not fail us. We pray that you keep us strong in the faith. In spite of all that may happen around us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hello? Oh, okay. So we thank God very much for giving us this Sabbath. Oh. So today we are going to listen to a nice story which is found in the Bible. And we are going to learn some nice lessons from it. I've captioned it, the first skyscraper. Do we know something like that before? Have, or have we heard something like that before? I hope we've seen buildings like this. Very, very tall buildings. Very tall buildings. And I've captioned this lesson, the first skyscraper. So we see that God, who created this world, is very wise. Please, we can move on. We can move on to. It's very wise, and he decided that in order to make sure that everybody in this world could live in harmony, 
He was going to give us one language. I said, how many languages? Only one language. But now, when you travel to places, there are times you can meet people and you don't understand their language. Why is it so? And how come we have different languages? At times I speak a language, you don't understand. At times you speak a language, I don't understand. So long time ago, very long, 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 long time ago, when God created this world, everybody on this planet Earth spoke the same language, no matter where they lived or where they were staying. As time went by, some people started moving to the east, some to the north, some to other places. And as they moved, some people found a place they called Sinai. I said, what? Sinai. Sinai. Very good. Uh huh. They were coming together. Yes. So they were having the same language and they came together and they wanted to build a city and also a town. So they started making bricks. They were making the bricks. So they decided that we are going to be together. All the people across the world decided that we are going to unite and be together. A big, a big a tower. Yes. And then the other one made the kaput car. Yes. And there was a big tower. They started making the tower. So we will see very soon. They started making the tower. You see? They have started bringing the materials together. They have started planning to make the tower. So they, they have started making it. You've seen? Mm hmm. Uh, together talk. Yes. So they brought everything together and became very tall. The building was becoming bigger and bigger and very tall. And they were so happy. They were so happy and they felt that they are very clever. But you know, God was not happy about this. Because God told Adam, and also after the flood, he told Noah that everybody on the world, in the world, he wants us to be united, but he don't want us to stay together. He wants us to spread across the world so that we fill the entire world. So God was not happy about what they were doing. So he decided to bring confusion. So the man at the top is calling for what? For bricks. But let's see what will happen. They, they brought him water. You see, the man at the top there is carrying water. And there was confusion in the camp. People were not happy. They started quarreling among themselves, fighting among themselves. Then they started separating. So they were not happy at all. So they started going in groups. If I can understand your language, then I go with you. If you can understand my language, then we, I go with you. So started, some started moving to north, south, East and what? Where? West. They were moving across the world. Everywhere. You know, that is why today we speak different languages. And that is why we have different people across the world. But this lesson is teaching us that, yes, we have different languages and different peoples, people across the world. We have so many languages but we must love each other. We serve a God who loves us all. And when we do or when we serve people, when you meet someone you do not know who needs your service and you help the person, you do that to the glory of God. Because in the original way, when God created us, we were together. We were having the same language. We were the same people. But because of what happened at Sinai. There were different languages, and today we have different languages, and people live in different places. So may we help each other. Whenever you move across and you see people who need help, help them, whether they understand your language or they don't. Give a helping hand, and by so doing, 
you serve God and also you serve humanity. Let us be kind to each other. Amen. Okay, so who is going to pray? Would else Daniel pray? Who will pray? Okay, so let's have a short prayer. Father in heaven, please help us so that we be kind to each other, no matter the language we speak, no matter where we are from, and we can be together to the glory of your name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God, church. We're going to sing again the song number 282 and song number three, number 260 as we prepare for the sermon. Shall we all rise and sing song number 282? i 
Just come and come and feel me now. Feel me now. Feel me now. Jesus, come and feel me now. Feel me with thy the Bible texts from Matthew 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop, cannot be hidden. I want to introduce Robinson, you can see it, and I have some question to him, as you know, because Robinson is one of the person here in Friedensau I know a longer time. He comes to Friedensau in 2000 and 10, one year after when I come. <laughs> so, and I know him as a student in theology in a master program, MTS. Some of you are also in MTS. And then he studied international social science. And then he works here in, uh, in a nearby Friedensau. And now since last September, he's a pastor here in the Seniorenheim and also for the church in Burg. He has four children, one wife, and he is one person who, who was also a person who started the international service here in Friedensau. 
He belongs to the team who started. And now he says, oh, I have to go to the, old, to the senior name. And uh, then he asked me if I will preach in an uh, old people home. And I say, yes, I give you a date and you give me a date for, for this chapel. So that is an arrangement. So the pastor changed. <laughs> So I'm, I'm happy that we have you here in Friedensau, also as a pastor, and uh, we are open what God gives you in your heart to understand what God will say to us. Please stand up, I like to pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the music, what we can sing, so we understand you, and we lift up our heart. Thank you for Robinson that he will preach today your gospel. Let us understand what you want to say to us today, that we understand it with our mind and with our heart, so that your spirit can bring fruit in our life and that we be a light in this world. That we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I'm happy to be here. Um, it's a privilege and an honor to stand uh, in front of God's children. I don't count myself worthy or to stand before you. But, um, yeah, nevertheless, I'm happy. I think the person who had typed my name typed it wrongly. I, I am very sensitive. Um, the Mogusu is not like that. That is a, di that is a different person. And my surname changed from last month. I think I changed my surname. I'm no longer Mogusu. <laughs> I changed my name um, from Robinson Onderi Mogusu. I had to change it because of the German laws. So I had to change it to Robinson Mogusu. That is my forename. My name, and then my last name, my family name is yet. It's now Onderi. So, uh, so that my family, all of them can inherit my name. But I thank God for this opportunity and um, I'm happy to see your faces. I'm happy to see your faces and I think I know most of you, we've seen each other here and there in the campus. It's a small campus, yeah. So I have some topic. I had decided to preach on something else, but I decided on shining your light. Shining your light. Let it shine. Shining your light. Just let it shine. I'll start with uh, an illustration, and I hope you follow me. There was a man and this man was given um, an assignment to stand on the rail tracks with a lamp to show the, in, up, uh, the coming trains that beyond there was a broken bridge. So the man was to stand there with the lamp and then the train would halt because the bridge was broken. So the first train came. The man did it, but the train passed by. And it had an accident. So this man was taken to the court. And they wanted to find out where was the problem. So the judge asked this man, did you, were you the one who took the assignment of standing at the railway track? And the man said, yes, sir. The second question, 
did you hold your lamp? And they said, yes, sir. And then the judge asked the last question. Did you wave the lamp? And the man said, yes. So the judge said, you're not um, the one at fault, so you can go. So he went home and he told his friend, I'm glad the judge did not ask if my light was on. <laughs> Is light important? If you close your eyes for a minute, you'll see darkness. If it is evening and we switch off our lights here, it will be totally dark. And I think if it is dark, for me to move from here to there, I will have to bump into some chairs and the people. The Bible mentions light over 230 times. In the Gospel of John, the Bible mentions light 71 times. Light as we know it, you cannot contain light. Light has no shape or form, for those who have done science. You cannot hold light in your hand, but you can let light shine on your hand. And most of us, me included, we define light in contrast to darkness. When I mean light, I mean the opposite of darkness. And you know, darkness is a place of mystery. It's a place of, yeah, that is where bad things happen. And some people believe, and I believed at one time, that the devil lives in the darkness. Can you picture a blind man? A blind man, I talked one time to a blind man, and if you get into their world, there is darkness all around in their life. They can't see light. Light helps us to look at God's creation. See the beautiful flowers. I can see it is, I'm also sometimes colorblind. I think this is purple. Oh. <laughs> Green. Yeah. You enjoy the beauty of creation because of light. Where I come from originally, it is in Africa, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Where I come from, 6.30 in the evening to 6.45, it is usually very dark. You know, the, the transition from light to darkness, it is 15 minutes. You have light, in 15 minutes you have total darkness that you can't see even the person next to you. So when I came to Europe, I tried to look at darkness, I don't see it because I'm used to the real darkness. Light. I'm calling your attention to the subject of light. From one of the greatest sermons ever told, and that is of course by Jesus, in the book of Matthew chapter five. And if you go with me in the book of Matthew chapter five, he begins with the Sermon on the Mount. It's the Sermon on the Mount. He begins with the Beatitudes. And in verse 14, he gives a domestic metaphor on, and he's trying to give the Christian influence in the world using metaphor. And the first metaphor that he uses is a negative one, salt. You are the salt of the earth. Salt. Why salt? You know, the world, if I'm to imply, you know, salt is, is, is not a sweetener. It's not a, 
it not, does not only give taste. Salt retards the rotting process. It slows the decaying process. And it was used by fishermen to put in their fish for, for them not to get rotten. That's why they, he used the, this example. And Jesus is saying that you Christians, you are the salt to decay the process, the decaying process of the world. This world is rotting. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 6, Isaiah says, from your foot to the head, it is full of sores, bruises, and wounds that are oozing, rotting. And Jesus says that you are the salt to retard the dying process of this world. But if our role is only to retard the decaying process, I think we would have failed in our, in our uh, assignment. Jesus goes ahead and says, you are the light of the world. This implies that the world is in total darkness. Light calls attention to the things that may not be seen. We, the world, we have made progress in technology and science. But in terms of spirituality, we have not made so much progress. There was a time where we thought that science and technology would solve all our problems. The more we educate our world, we'll solve all our problems. We become enlightened. Whenever a problem comes, we can confront it. But we have, in the last century or so, we have learned that we are still struggling with the same problems, like the old immoral problem, problems of war, problems of drug. They're still confronting us. I come to a conclusion and say that the world without Christ is simply groping in darkness. And in this context, Jesus is saying that you are the light of the world. In this area, 90 to 80, 80 to 90% of the people, they are atheists. If you contrast it to the first century, where people believed in God, unfortunately, communism came in Marxism came in, Gnosticism came in, Humanism came in, all the isms came in. And as a result, they made God irrelevant. They drew people away from God. And Jesus is saying that you are the light of the world. In this part of the world where people don't know about God, He's simply saying that the only hope of the world arriving at truth is through you and me. What did Christ mean when he says that you are the light of the world? I'm a student of grammar. And one thing that you have to be very careful is when you are dealing with the Bible, you have to interpret it in the right grammar. The German version of this verse is more clear, but the English one is vague. You are the light of the world. The first thing you notice is the grammar. You, in English, if I'm addressing uh, my friend here, um, I will say, Cinder, you. If I'm talking to all of you, I'll say you. You is you. But in German, or the Greek language, that was written, originally written, it is a bit more specific. And in this verse, the English speakers, you have to, to pay attention because you might miss the point. The you is not in singular. You 
It is in plural. In German, it is ihr seid. It is in plural. No wonder we have taught our children to sing that song. This little love of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You know, we believe that we have everybody a little light. It is not that we have many lights. You are many, but we have only one light. That is very important for our interpretation. Christ in you makes you the light of the world. Who is that light? There are many verses, as I said, that talks about light, but I choose only one. John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the life, the light of life. Now I come to the question, how are Christians, or how are we, to be the light? And I think this is where many of us go wrong. People start with the wrong idea about Christianity and the gospel. There are people, they have, I have classified four groups of people. Maybe you might find plenty of them. There are people who believe that Christians are people holding general views about life. How to live in peace, how to be helping people, how to become good. It's a point of view, it's an attitude. And that is why whenever we are confronted with, with, with big topics like homosexuality, they ask, what does the church say? Because we, have, we must have a view. When the war broke up in, in Russia, they started asking, what do you think about Putin? The church, what is your statement? When Corona came, they were asking, what is the perspective of the church? Because it is a point of view. They are begging. They have an understanding that a church or Christians are people with a point of view. There are others who go beyond a point of view. And they believe that Christianity is about ethics and morals. It's a book telling you how to live, how to make you a good person, how to help you to become a vegetarian. No interest in doctrines, but ethics of do's and don'ts. And you see, Mahatma Gandhi used the Bible in this aspect. And I would like to say that even myself, at one point in my life, spiritual journey, my understanding of Christianity was in this level. A code of ethics and morals. Because on Fridays in our family, our father would come and sit us on the table. And he would enumerate the mistakes you've done. And he would use the Bible and the spirit of prophecy to point a finger at you. And my understanding was that the Bible is about ethics, how to behave, how to be a good boy. Other people go beyond ethics and morals. And they feel that the Bible just describes or is a matter about believing in a God. It defines or draws us into believing in a God. That is why some have even decided God can be found in humanity. God can be found in nature. Or pantheism, where they think everything is about God and God is about everything. There are some who have gone beyond to understand Christianity as a matter of experience. That you are aware that there is the other. 
an experience. There are some churches where for you, uh, when you greet them, they say, I am born again, and they give you the experience. You know, I don't know if you've met such, such people. They tell you, I'm so-and-so, I believe I'm born again, I believe in Jesus Christ, blah, 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 and he had delivered me from ABCD. An experience. And some of us, we are craving that we may, we should have a Damascus experience like Paul. I was blind, but now I see. And some people feel and believe that Christianity is when I have a supernatural experience in me. Change of life. I'm not imagining these explanations, but it is explanations that are coming across. You might find it in literature when you interact with other believers. This is what they hold as what is Christianity. Now I ask you, what is your view about Christianity, you yourself? Think about it. What do you believe Christianity to be? Is it believing in Jesus, getting baptized, and then waiting for the second coming. Coming here Sabbath after Sabbath and waiting for his second coming as a good Adventist. Is that Christianity for you? When I consider all these explanations, I think they're a bit inadequate. Or rather, I would say they are incomplete. Whatever Christianity is, it is something big. A proclamation. Good news. Romans says it's the power unto salvation. An announcement to the whole world not to a few elements in the planet, to the whole world. Thrilling, exciting, good news. As you read through the pages of the, 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 the New Testament, you see the vibrant church having an experience about what Christianity is all about. It turns your worldview upside down. Man is confronted with the presence of Jesus himself. And Jesus says, follow me. A call, an assignment, follow me. When he came to the disciples, if you read as he was calling them, he said, he didn't come and preach to them. If you look at how he was calling them, he was saying, Matthew, he was, uh, he was in his business. And he said, come, follow me. And they left everything. And they followed him. Because it is a marching order. It changes your worldview from top to bottom. It takes hold of the whole of yourself. Your whole being. Your whole mentality. Your whole self. Is your view of Christianity that exciting? Or is it a baggage, a bother, an inconvenience? Do you know anything in this world as exciting as what you believe in? Do you know anything that moves your heart, that demands the exercise of your whole mind. After following him, he made a declaration to the disciples. You are the light of the world. After they took the call, he said, no, 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 wait a minute. You are the light of the world. Their world as they knew it. Our world as we know it. You are the light of this world. 
in your world, small or big, you and I are the light of this world. And it is because the world is in darkness. The question I ask myself, how are we to shine? How am I to shine and how are you to shine? Matthew talks about a city where everybody can see the lights. Jesus is our role model and example. His life shone through the darkness. And one thing that I picked about the life of Jesus, he had deep love for humanity. Jesus had a burden and a deep love for humanity. He showed it to everyone that he encountered. To do this, he had to be connected to the Father. I am convinced that shining for God is when we have love for humanity. Loving one another. When we show God's manifested love in us, by having love for one another, you and I are behaving in that role. You are the light. John 13, verse 35. John says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, or you are the light, when you love one another. My brothers and sisters, when you talk about you loving one another, it starts from here. It starts with us. If you look at how Jesus viewed family structure and his disciples or his believers, it's different. It's as if family was not important. It begins with us. When I love people who don't deserve it, doing good to them, those who don't deserve it, praying for them, you're being the light. We all struggle with loving others. Because some people are difficult to love. At times, it is hard to love. Some people, we need the grace of God to love them. At times, I realize I am also difficult myself. Loving one another. Christianity is not how much we can preach, the best sermons we can preach, the best melodies we can sing, splendid music, miracles, all those things, important as they may, done without love, they're worth nothing. Nothing. True Christianity, loving one another. You want to go to heaven? These are the folks you're going to meet there. Love them from here. I realized as I reflect more about love and I struggle with loving people because it's difficult that love somehow is reflexive. It comes back to you. When I love others, I appreciate my position in Christ. It is reflexive. Not only loving those who are doing good to me, but loving 
even the most difficult. I leave you this morning with this thought. You are the light of the world. This you can only do if we have love for one another. Amen. Shall we pray? I'm reminded to pray. Let's pray. Father in Jesus, we want to thank you for these words. We are the light of the world. It's not easy. That's why we need your help. We need your strength. That we may experience the joy of loving others. It is a call to much, to follow you, and to be a light. The world is seeking, seeking to see believers who are going to lift up Jesus by loving one another. Without hidden motives, loving one another. Help us that we may learn to love even the most difficult among us. Help us to realize that even ourselves, we are difficult human beings. Help us to make it easy for others to appreciate your goodness. Bless your church, lift us up to your throne, and give us the power through the gospel that gives us the energy and the charge to love one another. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we rise and sing the song number 308?
Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for how far you have brought us. We thank you for the love message. We pray that may you continue to guide us. Now, the love of God that binds the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as one binds us together as we depart in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we shall sing our closing song, number 309. Say. Hey.